Hey, Transformers, good to have you again today. Uh, this is day four of our studies in the miracles of Jesus, and I'm so sure that you've been blessed uh, since Monday. My name is Oscar Amis, and I'm a pastor in Deliverance Church of See, Monday, we looked at Jesus calming the storms. Uh, Tuesday, uh, we looked at Jesus healing the leper. Uh, Wednesday, we looked at Jesus delivering the, 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 the boy who who was tormented by a demon that would throw him into the fire and into the water. And on day four, we want to look at a different kind of miracle today. So, I mean, so far, just to do a, a simple recap, we've learned uh, that miracles are divine interventions into the lives of people by God. We also learned that there are about 35 miracles recorded in the Gospels alone. And I was able to give you the different categories of these miracles. I told you I just checked out my Bible concordance. You could do the same uh, and, you'll, and you'll find these different categories that we said uh, there are 17 miracles of healing. Jesus healing the sick, healing Peter's uh, mother-in-law, uh, healing uh, people who are, uh, who are troubled by different kinds of sicknesses and diseases, 17 of them, then six miracles of deliverance from demons. And we, we looked at one uh, on, on, on Wednesday. And then three miracles of raising the dead, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, uh, so on and so forth. And then nine miracles over the laws of nature. We also said, you know what? These are not the only miracles that Jesus did. In fact, John tells us in John 21 and verse 25, he says, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world will not have room for the books that will be written. John was simply telling us, you know, there are so many miracles that he performed, but he could only record 35. I told you, and I'll tell you again, that we believe in miracles. We believe that these are the days of miracles. You know, there are people who say, oh, the days of miracles are over. Don't you believe them? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did yesterday, he can do today. The miracles he performed in the past, he can perform. And he's still performing even now. If you believe in him, you will see him do such great things in your life that, you, that they would confound you. I want to pray for you that this week, this will be a week of supernatural miracles. I want us to dive and look at one uh, in the Gospel of Mark chapter 5. That's what we are looking at. One more miracle that we are looking at on this day 4. Uh, the woman with an issue of blood. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. The story of the woman with an issue of blood. That's what we're looking at today. The Bible says in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 uh, to 34, it says this, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew was. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. The woman with an issue of blood. This woman had issues. You know, I want you to understand uh, the context that this woman was coming from for you to be able to appreciate the seriousness of her condition. You see, just like we discussed on day two about the leper, I want you to understand that being, having an issue of blood was something terrible, was not anything good to write home about. This was a dangerous diagnosis. If you realized as a woman that you had an issue of blood, he, you are in a bad you are in a bad place you see such people were considered to be social outcasts women with the issues of blood were considered to be social outcasts they had a social problem 
meaning that they were an outcast, they were social pariahs, they were, you know, are thrown out there, uh, you know, even left for, for dead, <coughs> if you will. They were supposed to be quarantined. They were to exercise social distance because if an unclean woman, if a woman had an issue of blood came close to anyone or even touched anything belonging to somebody else, that thing would be unclean and the person would be, you know, quarantined for a number of days. So everybody would avoid anyone who had an issue of blood. These people would be quarantined away from their family, friends, and even society. In fact, uh, just like the lepers, if a woman with an issue of blood was walking by a certain street and people were coming from the opposite direction, she was supposed to shout, unclean, unclean, unclean. She was supposed to do that. Because like I told you, if that woman would touch even your shirt, touch even a cup, that cup would be, remain unclean for the rest of the day. And that's why such people were counted as social outcasts. No wonder this woman was afraid when uh, Jesus realized what had happened to her. No wonder she went for the hem of Jesus' gum because she knew, I can't, face, I can't face these men and these people eye to eye, face to face, because if they realize that I'm here and have an issue of blood and I've come to where they are, uh, the law says I should be stoned. That's, that's, that, that was the law, that's what the law said. This woman had, was going through some very big, big issues. I don't know what kind of issues you're going through. I'm sure in this season, many people are going through different, different kinds of issues. It may be issues that have come upon you as an effect of COVID-19, or it could be even other issues. I don't know what kind of issue that you're going through, but you're in good company. I want us to learn from the woman with an issue of blood and see how God intervened in her situation by her taking or making a few steps, uh, you know, doing a few things that I'll be sharing with us. And God divinely, miraculously, you know, uh, intervenes in her situation. A few things that we learn about this woman. Uh, one is that she had endured much at the hands of physicians, at the hands of doctors. She had gone to every doctor, you know, uh, went to all the doctors, all the specialists uh, in the land at that time, but none of them could take care of her problem. The Bible also says she had spent everything, but did not get better. So this woman has spent all the money that she had, and instead of getting better, the Bible says she grew worse. She was now not only sick, but now poor and broke as well. Can you imagine that you're broke and poor at the same time? The doctors had given up on her. They must have given her a few months to live, saying, you, you will die of this bleeding. This woman grew us. She was not getting better. Her health was deteriorating. This is where this woman was. So she's not only uh, isolated, quarantined, cast out there, but this woman was in a situation whereby her health was deteriorating. She had no money. So meaning she couldn't even afford to see any other doctor that she may be told that could handle that situation. That's where this woman was, desperate, beaten, broke. She needed a miracle. Things were difficult. Things looked impossible. She needed a miracle. The only thing that could sort out this woman was a miracle. I don't know about you. You could be in the same place and you're saying, you know what? I need a miracle. Where I am, my connections can't help me. The people around me can't help me. In fact, they could have given up on me. I need a miracle. I want you to understand, Jesus is able to give you a miracle. Three things that this woman did, and we will, after we've shared this, we can, we'll be praying together. Number one, the Bible says this woman heard about Jesus. This woman heard about, what had she heard about Jesus? She must have heard of the miracles that Jesus had performed. That's what scripture says, when she heard about Jesus. What had she heard? Um, I guess it's the miracles that Jesus had performed. I'm sure she had heard that the blind had received their sight. That's what she had heard. She had heard about the miracles where the dead, who had, the dead had been raised back to life. I'm sure she had heard that Jesus had fed 5,000 people uh, with five loaves of bread and two fish. She must have heard that Jesus had healed the man at the pool of Bethesda. I'm sure she must have heard of the miraculous working power of God that had intervened in the lives of so many, the different men and women who had been touched by the power of God. She must have heard that. And when she 
heard about Jesus, she took the next step. Because when you hear about Jesus, your faith does not remain the same. The Bible says, now faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I am so sure that what she had, the things that Jesus had done, built up her faith and led her to do the next thing. The next thing that she did, when she had that, she confessed. So the first things that she had about Jesus, then she confessed. Even before I look at uh, her confession, I want to ask you a question. What are some of the things that you've heard about Jesus? I'm sure you've had testimonies of the things that God has done. I'm sure around you, you know, people would say, uh, I was sick and Jesus healed me. Uh, I needed uh, a financial intervention and uh, intervention and God intervened. Uh, I, I, I needed protection and God protected me. Things were getting worse and God came through for me. I'm sure you've had people around you who, are, who have testified to that extent. Uh, not even people around you, what about you? I'm sure you, you, you can remember stuff and, and, and areas where God has intervened in your life in the past. You know, there, there's a time you were sick and God healed you. You know, there's a time uh, you could have been involved in an accident, but God, by his mercy, came in and intervened. You know, there's a time uh, maybe you didn't even have finances for school fees for your children, and God miraculously intervened on your behalf. Maybe you didn't have a job and God opened a door for you. You know, God has intervened in your life in several ways. I am sure you have a testimony of the things that God has done on your behalf. You see, this woman had, you have had, you have testimonies of what has happened to other people, and you have your own testimonies. When she heard about Jesus, she did the second thing. The Bible says she confessed. In fact, the Bible says she said to herself. I like the New King James Version. The Bible says she said to herself. In other words, she had to talk to herself. She talked to herself. She spoke out her faith. What did she say? She said, if I may touch the hem of Jesus, I am sure I'll be made whole. That's what this woman said. She spoke to herself. She convinced herself. She lifted up. She confessed out her faith. She said to herself, did you know that there are times in life when you've got to be your own physician in seasons like this? When you've got to be your own prophet, where you prophesy to yourself, you speak to yourself, you say, God, I know if I do this, these are the results that will come about. You speak to yourself. This woman spoke to herself. You know, many times we nullify the prayers that we make by the words of our mouths. As in you go and pray and you say, God, I want you to heal me, I want you to touch me, and you leave that prayer uh, closet or wherever you are and you say, thank you God for healing me and touching me. Then you walk down the streets, uh, you look at yourself and the symptoms are still there and you're like, oh goodness, I don't think God touched me. We nullify the prayers we make by the words of our mouth. Look at what Mark 11, 22, 24 says. The Bible says, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Just, just look at the, the number of times the word say, say, say is, re is repeated. I say to whoever says to this mountain, speaks to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And then verse 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you've received them and you will have them. Where does it start? You pray and then you speak it. You say it. You don't look at the mountain and you say, I command you to be cast into the sea. And then you come back and look at it and you're like, I knew you would not go. You're not that kind of a person. You say, I command you to be cast into the sea. And you know it will be done. And this story is the story of Jesus uh, cursing the fig tree. And the disciples got to see it's dried when you saw the physical manifestation. But when Jesus cast the fig tree, he walked away because he knew what he has said will surely be done. Child of God, I want you to understand. When you pray, when you believe God for something like this woman, speak it into being. Did you know the Bible says you shall decree a thing, you shall decree a matter, and it shall be established? Did you know the Bible says the power of life and death is in your tongue? That you can speak stuff 
into being. This woman spoke. She said to herself, if I may touch, what is that thing you're trusting God for? I want you to start speaking it today. I want you to start speaking it. I'm trusting God for healing. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. God, I'm trusting you for an open door. Thank you, God, you've already opened that door. I'm trusting God for a miraculous intervention. God, thank you because you've already done that. that this woman heard about Jesus. This woman confessed. She said to herself. And the number three thing that she did, she did, she did not only speak, but she acted. She acted. She touched Jesus. Do you know that faith is an action word. In other words, this woman didn't just sit where she was, through a pity party or complained and mama. She said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go where he is and I'm going to touch the helm of his garment. I know I'll be risking my life. I don't know what will happen to me, but I want to act on the faith that I have. In this season, friend of God, I want you to understand that once you've had, once you've confessed it, once you've said it, act. Some of us are murmuring because either I lost a job, I was laid off, my business has gone down. Rise up. Don't complain and mama. Do something about it. Once you've prayed about it, God has spoken. God is going to move on your behalf. He's waiting for you to take a step and take that step of faith. Like this woman who had an issue of blood. It is when she took that step, went and touched the hem of Jesus, that's when the flow of blood stopped. God is expecting you to act on what you believe. You, you hear what Jesus tells her. Woman, your faith has made you whole. It's like Jesus saying, you know what? You acted upon it. Your faith has made you whole. I want to challenge you. Rise up from where you are. Don't complain. Don't murmur. Don't throw your hands in the air. Don't cast off restraint, you know. Don't, don't, don't entertain those feelings of hopelessness. I want you to arise. Act on what you've believed. Move by faith. Go out there. Oh, I've looked for a job and I haven't gotten any. Go ahead and do that this week. I've applied so many times. I've never gotten any response. Apply again. Act on what you believe. Act on what you believe. You know, act on it. And you see how God will intervene on your behalf. Friends, like the woman with an issue of blood, God can intervene powerfully in your situation. I pray that today, that may God come through for you. May God intervene on your behalf. May he show himself strong in your situation. May he perform miracles in your life that you never even anticipated. May this day be a day of the supernatural. Whatever you touch today, I declare it is blessed. As you go out to look, to knock on doors, uh, to look for that job, I speak favor upon you. As you sit down to apply for jobs, I pray God is gone before you. As you go out today to open that business again, things may not have worked yesterday and the day before, go open it again today. God will bring people your way in the name of Jesus. You go looking for that tender, God is intervening on your behalf. Today, God is sending destiny helpers. Even strangers will show you unusual kindness because of the miracle working power of God. I pray for you and I declare victory upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you if you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal savior. That's the greatest miracle that anyone can ever have. Say this after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I give my life to you. Forgive me. Wash me with your blood and write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you've made that prayer, there's a number scrolling on your screen. I want you to call it. We are waiting on the other side. We want to talk to you, tell you of your next steps, help you to grow stronger in the faith. May God keep you. May God bless you. May this day and the entire week be a day of supernatural miracles. May you experience God like never before. In Jesus' name, amen.